everybody. Thanks so much for stopping back. Or if you're just finding my videos, thank you for, for clicking. Um, my name is Lori Fosa. I'm a certified Centangle teacher, an artist and illustrator, but I love to teach the Zentangle method. Um, this is what I do to calm my mind and get me back into the creative zone of my regular work life or whatever I'm working on. Um, if you're just joining, what we have been doing is this has been a project playlist where I wanted to develop a beautiful piece of art that you can frame or give as a gift, um, you know, any number of things. And I wanted to do it section by section, breaking it down with easy tangles and showing you how we can fit them together in, well, this is a Zendella in the middle, but in the first sections, I did just a Zendella with beginner tangles, showing you how to construct the string and some of our basic starter tangles. Um, in section eight, we did the found about going up the side. And we also um, added some organic, you know, just some little tangles, some tangle enhancers. All right, so today we're gonna add um, the little Y4. Um, well, it's a tangulation of Y4 at the bottom of our piece. It's a blossoming tangle, it's a drama tangle, it is so many things with it, including making these um, unique boxes of any size. As you can see, I'm trying to do just some, um, this has Y4 in the middle, and this of course is the Y4. And I'm trying to just collect um, uh, the names I wanna put on my wall with the tangles, and maybe that'll help me pronounce them correctly when I see it, if I can look up. Because <laughs> I'm thinking about so many things. Um, but this one is Y4. And first I'm gonna demonstrate, if you don't know how to do this tangle, I'm gonna demonstrate it on a small, this is a, called a bijou. It's a very small tangle by, uh, a very small tile by Zentangle.com. And then, what we will do is I want to show you how I put together my different Y4s so that they'll fit in a smaller section and kind of make a, a plate that I can put initials on or a date on or something of that type. This whole playlist is dedicated to this one piece. So if you already know Y4, I will put the um, the timestamp of where I begin with the project, and um, I'll do a demonstration of just the tangle, and then I'll do a demonstration of how I'm going to measure out mine for my art piece, how I constructed for my art piece on here, and then I'll actually do it. But when I do it on my art piece, I won't talk necessarily because talking and really concentrating are not my strengths. <laughs> I can talk and do a rough demonstration, but if I'm working on a, a piece that I really want to concentrate, um, I'll just show you quickly how I do it. That's why I've sped them up at the end. So with all that being said, um, I think that covers it. And again, this is this is part nine, one more to go, and we will actually do our mat and some different ideas of how we can frame our, um, wrong Zendella, how we can frame our um, Zendella that we worked on, some different ideas if you wanna put it in a journal or if you want to frame it, um, whatever you might, might wanna do, I'll, I'll give you some ideas on that. So I, I love Zendellas. Um, I usually like to incorporate them into a bigger art piece, but they are really fun to just work on the tiles from Zentangle.com. Welcome to part nine, where we will do Y4.
I'm going to demonstrate on the bijou. It's very small. I'm going to pull out my 0.01. Um, usually I have my micron 01, but right now all I have is my 02. I have a couple of desks and my pen case is at my other desk. So I'm using the Pentel, which is very good too. Y4 begins with something like we would do with um, a tangle, if you're familiar with Mooka. We start, take off, come around into a circle, a wide circle, spiral, and land. Simple. That's your one side. So I'm going to turn my tile and I'm going to repeat this line or mirror it on the other side. So simply start our takeoff. And it doesn't have to be exactly as the other one. I'm just making something close and land. We are going to draw a line where these little ends separate. So we're going to take our pen, take off, stop at our bar, and pick up on the other side to meet. These don't have to be exact. If mine were higher, I would just carry it up to, to meet this corner right here of this circle. Okay, we're going to do it again. We're going to start more at the bottom of our circular shape that looks like mooka. And again, cross over so we have a ribbon that looks like it's folding under this part right here. Okay, now we're going to connect the top. So we'll pick a point to take off and I'm going to add a little notch in mine and then go to the other side and land. And if it curls a little, that's, that's fine. That's fine. There's no exact, no exact way. Now I'm going to aura these lines or draw behind, make a parallel line. So as carefully as I can, don't worry if it's not perfect. I'm going to aura that line down to the bottom. Pick up. Okay. I'm going to do it again on this one. Start up at the top, following that line till we get to the end. That's simple. Now to enhance this little section here, I can fill in this little notch or divot, whatever you want to call it. And I could cap it off as well. Just making a bit of overlap on that edge. Now I also want to aura the lines on this side of the inner portion. So one right here and one over here. So that just gives me a little bit of like the ribbon is wrapping over and coming around the other side. Varying line weight. I can just darken just the back of this circle. You can change the look so much by applying different pressures with the tips of your pen. 
even working within the same size pen, it depends on how much weight, how hard you're pressing, and you will get different line widths. And we call that weighting the line. All right, so that just gives it a little bit more dimension on the back. And if I wanted to, I could darken up just this one right here to give that just a little bit more depth. Ever so slightly, still leaving my ribbon there, what appears to be a ribbon. And I'll do it again on this side. That's it. Okay. Now we go to shading and watch the dramatic effects that happen once we add our pencil. So let's come in with our graphite pencil. If you're not working with the Zentangle mini graphite, no problem. A 2B will do the job. You just want a smooth lead, something that is blendable and you can spread out. That graphite on your paper. And I'm going to shade just slightly under the tops of my whiteboard. And then I shade ever so slightly on the bottom, giving it that depth of rounding up. And then I'm going to shade just the bottom to curve it up. On my piece, I tend to shade the top too because I like the middle to pop out. But for this one, we're just gonna shade the bottom. Just so you can see that change. Okay, now with our tortillon, let's come in and ever so gently with the side of your blender, blend out that graphite from dark to light and I rotate my blender and create that depth that we're looking for. If you don't like what you're seeing, use your eraser or if it's too light, add some more graphite. But again, just using the side of the blender and pushing that graphite from dark to light. When I'm working on a piece, I'll spend more time in the shading than in the actual drawing. There's just so, your, your art, I know I've said it before, it just comes to life with shading. And then the more variance you add, the darker lead, you could go in and add just a bit darker here and a bit darker here, and then shade that out. And you create more depth with each value change, or value is just the depth of color, so you can achieve it with a 2B by doing additional layers. So that is it. I'm gonna just darken a little bit more just for an effect here. And that is basic Y4. Now that you know this tangle, watch all of the things you can do. Let's begin by drawing our anchor points. Your anchors are these U shapes right here. 
and they're the first thing that we're going to draw. What I'm doing is I'm working in more of a, a square pattern. So I want my anchor points to fall at four corners for this piece. Now this will be a little bit long, larger because when I go to the, um, to the piece that we're working on, it's gonna have to be quite small. Okay, when I do mine, I want a little bit wider scope, um, a wider anchor to work with because mine's gonna be squished into this small section. So I would practice these a couple of times and see what works for you. Now, I, I love the uniqueness of this because nothing is measured, nothing is exact. And it, it almost reminds me of um, those um, little stamps or, or um, you see on treasure maps, you know, you see the scrolls in the side and this just reminds me of that. They're, they're not exact. So I wanna put my anchor points, um, I'll do it somewhat big because that's gonna get too small, but I'm just guessing. So I'm putting a wider one here and then you can play with the sizes and um, I really want them at the corners and they're kind of, they're close together. They're not, they're not far apart. So um, put one here and again, I'm just kind of guessing and I'm mirroring this one. So I would say somewhere in this neighborhood. And I want one on this side. Mine is, is going to have four anchors. Okay, so there's my anchor points. Perfect, no. All right, now I wanna start like we did before with our Y4. Take off, come around, and land, stopping just short of the end. Do one over here, take off, come around, stop, and land. Okay, now to connect these, my line here, pick up and put it over here and here, make one, pick up and connect it over here and connect the top. If you want to make that divot, go ahead just by placing a little triangle, half a triangle. Okay, now I want this part to come around, kiss this one, so to say, and up, and go around and kiss this one, and up. And some people leave the same effect so they can make a little bar on this side. It's not going to show on this piece of work, so I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, back to ordering. If you choose to put an aura, now it might get so small you choose to leave this part out. And I'm gonna, well, you know, and you can fill in this divot. On my design, I have some um, leaves uh, coming out of here, some um, poke root. This is what mine is looking like. So I'm not gonna fill in my divots because in my design, that's what I'm doing with that part. So let's just go back to our Y4, weight the line on the outside. or this one. There's many ways to fill this section underneath. Okay, so we have our ribbons, we have our aura. Okay, let's move on to the next one. 
but that's why I'm not filling in the little divot that you see up here. Okay, let's do the same thing on these three. In mine, I have the leaf coming out of two sides and I still have the divot on the top and the bottom, but balancing it on my art piece, I only put leaves and poke root coming out of these two sides. So that's why I'm not coloring in the divots and it's just based on what your work is. All right, okay, so let's fill in the other three anchors and then I'll show you how I connect them up. All right, so our next one. Okay, I'm gonna start here. Up. Stop. and connect these start here pick up go across and then at the bottom pick up go across and just meet the circle. Don't worry if the line's not straight. Just meet that circle. Okay, on this one, kiss the line, come around. Kiss the line, come around. Now we're gonna connect these. Now again, don't worry about perfection because once you shade this and add your detail work, you're not gonna see the drastic things that you think you see now. Don't don't worry about that. Um, just practice them on you know a sheet of paper or a tile or something till you're comfortable. Um, it's very easy to do if you just follow the steps. All right, now I want to connect these lines right here. 
from the start to the start. So I'm looking at where I'm taking off and where I'm landing. So I'm going to take off. I'm going to put my divot in because I'm going to add the botanical tangles coming out and connect it to the other side. That one isn't quite even, but that's okay. All right, start here. Dip and connect it to the other side. Start at the top, look at where you're going. And connect it. And it's easier to see if you if you're working, you know, if you're right-handed, you're working this way. You can see your middle section better. I'm trying to keep my my hand out of the way so I can't see where I'm going necessarily. But if you turn your work the way you're working, you can see where you're hitting and getting that middle better. So that's um That will make it easier. Always work in a way that's comfortable for your hand. Okay, so look at already. You have got a twisting and a turning effect where it looks like these are coming out and rolling over. And that will, will enhance that deeper as we shade. Okay, so this is a very easy aura line. We're drawing behind or copying. We're gonna aura that anchor from one side to the top of the other, like so. Turn and do it again. Turn again. deeper effect right? and we're going to fill in these back pieces now I didn't do that on this one yet because I wasn't sure if I wanted to use um, a color or something else but if I darken these the more dramatic this will be so I hadn't finished this piece yet I have a lot to do okay now with my 05 it'll go quicker if I fill in just this opening, not covering up the lines that we that we um, did the aura, like so, and just go around and fill in these spaces. I could probably even go up to a point oh eight and that would be a little quicker. around and keep doing that same effect just in this part right here. sharpened graphite pencil and just lay down some graphite. There's so many ways you can shade this as well. I'm 
circling around the anchors. And I'll probably put a little bit of shadow here. Like I said, I'm gonna have botanicals coming out of little tangle enhancers coming out of my divots. So there would be some darkness here, I would see. I'll probably go back and catch that edge too. You're going to be working very small on the art piece if you went by the, with the 7x7. Seven seven. So don't lay the graphite in too heavy. Or you lose all your, your white. It's not lost forever. We can get an eraser and bring it back. Or add more graphite as we see fit. <laughs> that one wasn't centered at all. <laughs> Makes it more unique. texture in this paper too so I, I like the look of the texture okay let's spread that graphite out blend it out a little and you'll see the the dimension start to appear and if you're working in color I mean maybe you could color the anchor lines it depends on what you're doing Smoothing that out. But you can see the design fun you can have. With these, with these anchor points, you can make it fit around so many things, depending on the piece you're working on. And again, the base tangle is Y4, and this is just enhancing it. You'll see people aura the inside as well, so you get another dimension, but I want to leave some space in here to put the initials so i'm not doing another aura on this one okay so that's the base now i'm going to tang or er, um shade a little in the rounded sections And if I need a little bit more graphite, just let a little bit in I can work with. I like to put some in here too. Okay, now this little bar here that we ordered, I really like a lot of um, a lot of the Y4 I see, people do so many different things. I love the, the split line where you put just a touch of a line in and then leave a bit of a sparkle in between. 
I love that look, but mine's too small, so I'm never going to, that's just not going to stand out. So what I think I'm going to do is, um, if I blacken this, it disappears, but I'm going to thicken this line. Okay, let's go back to shading. And then the top corner, just to give it a bit of lift behind so it's popping off. Oop, got into my bar there. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, now when I get to the um, piece of art where I add this, I just want to show you the quick the poke leaf and little stems that I'm planning on adding. So I'm simply going to start at that divot, come out, come back, maybe make another one over here, pointy, and then do the poke root. root like we did in section, I can't remember, seven. <laughs> I think it was seven. Came around. And if I hit the bar, I stop, come back. So that's just my idea for the piece of work, the project that we're working on. Stop and back. And just depending on how far, how much room I have. And you could add, you could even add some Bronx cheer. Um, there's no end to what you could have coming out of here. And Bronx cheer is just drawing. Usually you start in the middle and make it grow. So drawing the circles, leaving a bit of a highlight in some varying the highlight just making it grow depending on the work that you're doing how you want it to look i want that to be a double stem so something like that and then i would shade those and then in the middle if there is too much graphite you can use your kneaded eraser lift some out like so but that's that's the idea okay so that was our rough demonstration <laughs> but remember an anchor point is simply this shape that you're starting with. So the narrow it is, the less room you have to work with, the smaller it will be. This one, the black would be not too deep, very subtle. a rough look at changing the size. I generally like to make mine wider on the outside. But that's just me. Okay. So that is what we'll be doing on our artwork. So let's proceed to our project and do it for real. Okay. When we're working on our project, 
um, decide which way. I don't know how you did your ribbon or what you would like to do with the top, but decide which way where you want to place it. I've always planned on putting mine down here. So I've got the mat line drawn here. So this is the section I'm working in. So it is quite small. So I'm gonna pencil out my, this is just a regular pencil, but I'm gonna pencil out my anchor points first and just make sure that I have it lined up. And doing it this way, mine's going to fall behind if I leave it that high. Um, I think I'm gonna move it down just a hair. That's why I'm doing it in pencil, just as first marks. So when I do this one, it's close but that works, okay? Do one down here. And because my mat is going over this, I might decide to carry it over my mat. That's another one. I have so many ideas for this mat. Or I would just stop it and it would cut off. So that's something to think about if you're using a mat. So again, it is working with the end result on this piece. So I'm going to move it even closer. Okay, so then when I come out, I'll have enough room but I'll probably keep the mat near me so that I can test it. And over here, um, I'll put about this much. Okay, now there's nothing wrong with testing it out. So they're gonna be about that big and about that big. So I think that'll work pretty good. Okay, now I'm comfortable enough to use my pen. So I'm gonna go back to my point one and add in my anchor points and then add in my Y4.
see, even though I put the pencil marks in, I still was making adjustments by eye as I went. And again, this is so small. Tiny little things are not going to show up. So I'm just going to erase the pencil marks that I had as guides. All right. Now I want to go and connect these lines and these are so tiny that I'm not going to put in that additional aura line that we did here. They're just, they're just so small. I could put maybe one line in the middle. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Just let's see how it turns out and then we'll decide. So. Okay, now I'm ready to aura the anchors. Just the one line around. Okay, I'm going to, before I do the shading, I just want to add my poke root some tango enhancers. This is so small, I'm not going to use my, my 2B. Um, if yours is larger, it works just fine. Um, this is so tiny, I'm going to use a very um, soft B lead and do my shading. And then we'll decide when it's done if we need anything else.
okay. Now, mine's not perfectly centered. It's okay. Whatever yours turns out to be, don't be, don't be critical. Just stand back and admire it. And as you refine it, which is what I would be doing, is just working more on the details and finishing it up that way. Deepening now the Zandala, I want to provide a little extra depth under here, which will draw attention away that it's not perfectly centered. If you want this to grow, if you want to add some things on top, if you want to darken and deepen the fine lines, those are all the extra things that I would be would be doing, but not necessarily filming all of those steps. Um, but this finishes up part nine, and part ten is our last one, and we will figure out some options for the for the mat and that will change everything dramatically depending on what you choose i think i'm going to show several variations one tangled one colored um since i said this wasn't mine is a smooth paper so this won't take watercolor but i might cut a piece of watercolor paper um out to be my frame and i'll show you what a watercolored version might look like and then i have some ideas for i keep grabbing the wrong one i have some ideas for the zendella that we worked on as well um so we just did two different versions and one working it into a piece of art and the other just working on the zendella itself so that is it for today and i hope <laughs> I hope you are having a great day wherever you are. My dogs will not stop, so I have got to stop. I have been waiting for a quiet moment, and it's not going to happen. <laughs> so anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed Y4 today, and um, I hope you play with it and see what you, what you come up with. And um, I hope you're loving your piece, and um, just... Stand back and appreciate what you've done so far. That is definitely step eight. And step one is always gratitude. Gratitude for everything. Everything we have, everything we're able to do, whatever our circumstances are. So enjoy your tangling. And I hope that you um, you keep, keep trying different tangles. And blue is scrambling my brain, so... <laughs> So anyways, that's it for this one. Much love. Keep tangling. And I'll see you in part 10, our final part to this playlist. And we did it. <laughs> so much love. I'll see you soon. Bye. Watch the day turn tonight,